Welcome to Hartman Math. This is lesson 4.3, quadratic graphs. Y equals A times X minus P times X minus Q. It's going to be known as intercept form or factored form. Before we get into the graphs, though, let's do some more evaluating. Given a function in this form, G of X equals, find G of negative 3. So we're going to replace all of the x's with negative 3 since this x was replaced with negative 3. We're going to do that with all of them and write the substitution negative 2 times negative 3 minus 3 times negative 3 plus 5 and you're definitely welcome to now just enter that directly into a calculator get a numerical answer of 24. All right, you try this one evaluate g of 5 same function now we're doing g of 5. Give it a try, pause here until you've got your answer. Again, we're replacing x's with 5. Hit the calculator, should get negative 40. On to the graphs. As I said, this is either known as intercept form or factored form. These are going to give us x-intercepts, these factors. x-intercept will be p comma zero and q comma zero. And those are going to be the first points that we use on our graph. So again, before we get to the graph then, just see if we can find the uh, intercepts. So we're going to talk about x and y intercepts for the graph y equals x minus 3 times x minus 5. So it's in intercept form. We're going to find the intercepts, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So we start the x-intercepts. This factor and this factor are going to take us to x-intercepts. This is probably the easier one. Okay, so think about it in this form, because this is what the form is. A, which in this case is not visible here, but an invisible one would be our A. It's not going to lead us to intercepts, but it definitely would tell us a little bit about the graph when we get there. And then our factor is x minus v. So x minus what and x minus what. So the easier one is on this one here, x minus 3 is x minus what number? Basic, right? 3, which tells us that 3 comma 0 is going to be an x-intercept. A little bit more difficult here x plus 5 is the same thing as x minus what number? On that one, we should come up with negative 5. Minus minus turns into plus. Negative 5. So negative 5 comma 0 is an x-intercept. Before we get to the y-intercept, because this could be useful, oftentimes when we're dealing with x's, inside the parentheses, a good strategy for us is to think opposite. So if we look at this, think opposite, positive 3, comma 0. Think opposite, negative 5, comma 0. Gets us to, as long as it starts with x, starts with x. That's going to be a good strategy. Now for the y-intercept, for any y-intercept, you can always just substitute in 0 for the x's. So 0 here and 0 here. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 0 plus 5 is 5. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. We plugged in 0 for x. We got negative 15. So we're talking about 0 comma negative 15. Y-intercept in this class is always a point. Not a number, a point. We'll always start with the 0 if we're talking about a y-intercept. You try here, pause, find the intercepts, x-intercepts, and y-intercept of the function. X-intercepts, think opposite, negative 2, comma 0, positive 9, comma 0, y-intercept. Here's where the 1 half is going to come into play, though, as we substitute in 0 and 0, we're going to get 2 
times negative 9 is negative 18. Half of that is negative 9. So we substitute in 0 for x, we've got negative 9 for y, there's our point 0 comma negative 9. Right, on to our graph. So we're going to use the same strategy to get us going here as we no longer have an ABC to work with. We're going to go after intercepts because it's an intercept form, specifically the x-intercept. So we're going to look here and say, all right, think opposite. 2 comma 0, negative 3 comma 0. So what we do with those is, one, we can put them on a graph. 2 comma 0. Negative 3 comma 0. Now what we're looking for is the value, the line, that's going to be halfway between those because we, our parabola is going to have symmetry. So what's halfway between 2 and negative 3? Well, the way that you can calculate it mathematically is to add those two numbers, you get negative 1, divide by 2 because we're taking an average of two numbers, and you get negative a half. That's going to be right here, or as a decimal, negative 0 0.5. That's going to be our middle x for our table of values. We'll have these in here. Notice there's some room here. So as far as where we put those, when we just found out the axis of symmetry, we just drew it, x equals negative 0 0.5. So for our table, that's going to be the middle x. And since there's some numbers here that we don't have, notice I left a, a space here to space there, and I put the negative 3 and the positive 2 on the first spot and the last spot. So here we have choices. Okay? We definitely want to make sure that they're the same distance away from the negative 0 0.5 so we can use the symmetry. So we can either choose these two numbers or these two numbers. Either one is fine. Don't pick these two though. They're not the same distance away from our axis of symmetry. So here or here. So I think I chose these ones right here. So we've already got those. We know that they're, uh, we already got the y coordinates to go there. We just have to need these two. So remember, these two, since we did pick them to be the same distance away here, uh, they're going to be the same number. So we don't need to really make that calculation twice. If we're doing the zero, yeah, negative two times three is negative 6, half of that, negative 3. And then we just have to do the negative 0 0.5 like we were doing early on. Substitute it in, make the calculation. You should get negative 3.125 when you do 0 0.5 times, substitute in negative 0 0.5 minus 2, negative 0 0.5 plus 3, all those parentheses should get that. So as we plot those points, Negative 3.125 means go down 3 and just a little bit lower than that, and we can draw our parabola. From there, the characteristics of the graph, pretty much just like we were discussing in the previous lessons. So we wanted to come up with domain, all real numbers. Range, y is greater than or equal to negative 3.125. Vertex, here it is right here. Uh, Y-intercept, we found that. That's on the graph as well. So all those things, if we wanted to find them, would be the same as from before. Right, example number four, graph. Find the x-intercepts first. This one's probably the easier one. Think opposite, 2 comma 0. This one's tricky. Don't worry about the negative. That has to do with the A. That does not have to do with the x-intercepts. It's really negative 1 times x. So my question would be, since we're talking about the form x minus p, x is the same thing as x minus what number? Answer that question is 0. x is the same thing as x minus 0. So anytime you have a factor of x, 2x or 5x, there's an x-intercept at 0, 0, 2, 0. Go to the graph. Now 
the halfway line, pretty easy to determine in this one. I think we could just draw it right there. There's our axis of symmetry. And we hit it one. That's our axis of symmetry. The vertical line, x equals one. As we set up now, there are no points in here. So when we set up our table, one for the middle, we're gonna have zero and two be right here because there was nothing in between to squeeze in there. So therefore, that's gonna be a negative one, a positive three, and then we can just start trying these. Like negative one, I don't think I'd like to try the negative. I'm gonna do three and six, I know these are gonna have the same thing. So if I do three, I get negative three, times three minus two is one. Negative three times one is negative three. And we can do the others as well. And plot the rest of the points. But we see it's going down, and that's because the A was negative one, it's gonna open downward. So the domain, all real numbers, the range, ooh, everything is below, on or below one. Why is less than or equal to one? Y intercept, zero comma zero. Vertex, one comma one in parentheses. Example number five, graph y equals two x squared plus x minus six. Okay. So we've done this in a previous one. We could do A, B, C, but what I wanna show you here um, is just another strategy. But in general, if we just had to graph this, you probably wanna use A, B, C. But we could try to get this into factored form by factoring this. So there may be some problems that just say, and they don't want, maybe not, don't want you to graph, just write this in factored form. So we can just do that to start with. So let's think three terms, no GCF, double bubble, 2x squared, so 2x and 1x. Think of ways to make them minus six. So go ahead and pause here for a moment as you see if you can come up with the correct factoring for that expression. The one that's going to work, y equals 2x minus 3, x plus 2. So now, for the x-intercepts, now this one's a little bit trickier because it doesn't start with x. So in terms of an x-intercept, we would want to think of setting this equal to 0. 2x minus 3 equals 0, solve for x, and you're going to get the x-coordinate of the x-intercept. Add 3, 2x equals 3, x equals 3 over 2, otherwise known as 1.5. x equals negative 2 for this one, so negative 2 comma 0. Think opposite, it did start with x, so we can do that. So we got 1.5 for 3 halves comma 0, negative 2 comma 0. So let's see what that looks like on the graph. One and a half, three halves is one half, two halves, three halves, and a negative two. All right, so coming up with the halfway is gonna be a little bit tricky here. So again, we may wanna do the mathematical formula, which is to add the two numbers. You might wanna do it in decimal form, 1.5 plus negative two, divide that all by two, we're gonna get negative one-fourth or negative 0.25. And we do have some values in here, so we'll use that. We've got our middle x is negative 0 0.25. And I said we got some, but our issue here is we're not gonna see the symmetry in the table because the distance from here to here, sorry, the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here are not the same. So we've got a couple of points that you pick from here and then just one to pick from there. So I picked negative one and zero, and I didn't choose this one here. We just need five points. So like I said, these two aren't gonna be the same because they're not the same distance away from our middle x. This distance is bigger than this distance. So we're gonna need to actually calculate all three by you can use this one, you could use this one, your choice as far as where you want to substitute them in. These are the values that you get. You plot the points, it looks a little bit like this. 
So draw the parabola through. That's it for today. See you next time.